Hi and welcome to another video and today I'm going to show you how to make a Viper Mini Ultimate here using a G305 mod and the base from Zoro Cirrus. I'll link in the description to his Etsy page where you can buy this base. I'll also put a link to my shop as well if you want me to make you one of these mice. Now, if you're not familiar with this channel I'll give you all the statistics and data to give you the competitive edge on your rivals here and I'll also show you some gaming mods like this to allow you to customize your mice going forward. So what we've got to do here is take apart the G305, you're going to need to buy one of those for the wireless PCB. And you're going to need a Viper Mini as well, obviously. You're also going to need a 3D printed base. You're going to need a AAA battery, some screwdrivers, a nylon tool here, as well as a soldering iron. All the links to this stuff will be in the description. So continue to strip down the G305. You're also going to need the top shell of the Viper Mini. There are some slower teardowns. I'll put those in the description as well. I've just sped this up because a lot of people have seen these over and over. We're going to test your 3D base, just make sure it quickly fits where you expect it to do. You're going to need to trim out some of the Viper Mini shell to allow the space to fit. Now when you're trimming out this shell, I trim little bits at a time. You'll see throughout the video to make sure it fits. There's no reverse in this. Obviously, when you start trimming these bits out, you can't put it back. So just keep chopping out all these bits within the Viper here. There's a PDF that comes with the 3D printed base here as well. If you need to do that, you can follow that as well. Or you can just keep looking at this video and seeing what's being trimmed out and get your vision of what you need to do. But most of the internal part of it is going to be trimmed. If you want to see any gameplay with this mouse, I'll put a link in the description as well. I've used it in Call of Duty here, testing it out. So you want to go see how it performs, definitely check that video out. It's on my Biddy Bob gameplay channel. The rear of the shell clips into the base here, which is pretty good. You won't need any screws to hold it in place. I'm just checking the fit here, put the PCB in, make sure it fits okay. Make sure you put the power button in, which is what I always forget, because the paint put in afterwards. And you're going to need these little brackets here that you printed off, that push into the side of the encoder here, which is a 10mm TTC. And there's also one for the other side. These are the ones that sit over the top of the switches and hold them in place. If you haven't printed before with 3D printing, it can be a little bit fiddly. So if you haven't any problems, you can use a little bit of glue. You'll see I use blue tack in a bit to hold it in place, just to get an idea. And you can also use some tape as well if you need to. So the next step is to screw in the PCB once you've got the switch in. You can use the default side buttons. You just need to position them correctly, which you'll see in a bit. You don't need to change anything else. Some of the other wireless mods are done for like the Ultralight 2. You'll have to resolder them. But on this one, you can just use these stock G305 PCB, which is good to see. You also can use these stock left and right mouse switches, which I use. You could upgrade these. I've done a few with upgraded switches, but at the moment we're just using the 10 millimeter Omrons in here. So what we want to do, you want to slide over the 3D printed bracket over the switch, push it back into the encoder, which it holds it nicely in place. The right side one's a little bit trickier, but this one seems to be nice and snug, especially on my print here, which I printed off myself. The one thing you're also going to need to do is trim off the pins on the bottom of the switch to allow it to fit in to the PCB. You'll see it holds up a little bit. I just trim them off with a pair of pliers. This allows the button to sit a bit lower down against the PCB. You can still desolder it if you need to. You don't need these extended pins. You'll notice throughout this video, you can going to have to continuously, and I will continuously as well, test the fit. That is the key part. When you print these 3D bases, the hardest part 
in fairness, is getting them to fit correctly. It's very, very tricky. So what you see now is I'm using a bit of blue tack, or some Americans might call it putty. And this here just holds it in place so I can get the positioning right. I do glue them in later on, but not in this video. But if you want to do that, you can do it yourself. It's a little bit more permanent. So make sure you get it in the right position. You can't change this after. Like I say, I use blue tack or tape generally to do this because it's easier to maneuver around if you make a mistake. Then again, just check the fit. You'll see once the PCB is in now, I'm going to need to trim more out the shell. You can see I can't quite get it to fit. This is where I'm just working out where that additional plastic is inside. Now do trim the front part of the scroll wheel out. You don't need to do that. I'm just trying to make it fit. It will affect it if you do it though, to be honest. So it's up to you. Like I say, it's going to take you a while to get this to fit right. You have to keep trimming more and more plastic out. You can always take some out. You can't always put it back in. Check your buttons front and left as well. Make sure the switch is connecting right. You might need to add additional tape to the plunger. You might need to pad out the base a little bit with some tape to get the switch to the right height. You'll only know that once you try and fit the shell. And it depends on each mouse how much you need. You have to work that out on your own. You just have to feel it to see where it sits. Now the battery. This has got a cool little battery mod here from Zor Cirrus here. So it uses a AAA rechargeable USB. This just holds nicely onto the DPI switch. There's a little bit of a sponge here that you need to take out on the LED, just ping that off. Restricts the battery holder from being put in place. Now again, you can glue this down if you want. I glue it to the DPI switch at the base if you need to. If you find it's rattling around, it's pretty secure on its own, to be fair. You can use the existing cable in here at the G305 battery. You're just pushing the rear spring one. You're going to have to solder the other one onto the front of the AAA battery and I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Probably just my camera going a little bit of focus here, plus I'm moving out of the way. Get an idea though, when you look inside, you see the spring. Get your AAA battery. All the links are in the description, remember. This is a snug little fit in here. You gotta make sure you get the right rotation for the USB port. We're gonna use a magnetic USB cable here. Keep your hands on camera, Bob. Your magnetic cable it's got like a little adapter on the front here the micro usb pushes into the battery and that magnetic clips to this cable pretty cool i use them on my g pro now we just push this into the usb port these will last you quite a while these batteries you can get different size uh, milliamp ones you can get 600 450 just depends what's around it can be quite pricey as well so definitely shop around so we can get the cameras on some wonderful focus issues Check the rear springs fitting right and make sure it's pushed nicely to the back.
It'll clip in at the rear and it'll clip in on the PCB here, which is pretty cool. And you can see at the bottom there, the charge port now. So this means you don't need to pull off the top shelf to charge it, which is cool. Nice and secure anyway, even without any glue. I just glue it on later. If I find it wobbles around, especially if you're slamming it around quite a bit, it could come off here. So once you know you're happy with it, I would definitely glue it. The only problem with the charge port being on the base is you can't charge it when you obviously need it if you're gaming at the same time. But these batteries do last a long time. You're probably going to get a couple of weeks, if not months out of these, depending on how much gaming you do. Connect the batteries to the PCB. Test that it works. You can see a blue light comes on the G305 base here if you need to just check it. I'm just touching the battery to make sure it's all good. What you don't want is a dud battery and then you solder it. That'd be no good to anybody. You'd have to desolder it and mess around again, so hence I was just checking it there. Bring out a file and just file down the very end of the battery so the solder will stick. It's a bit it's a bit smooth naturally, so it won't adhere to it very easily. I generally just give it a little bit of a rub here. The file just to rough it up and then I can attach some solder to it and then the, the battery cable will mount to it, no problem, and it'll stick on. I mean you could tape it, I wouldn't recommend that, but up to you. If you want to see any gameplay with this mouse, I'll put a link in the description as well. I've used it in Call of Duty here, testing it out. So you want to go see how it performs, definitely check that video out. It's on my Biddy Bob gameplay channel. This is the DPI extension here that you need to put in. You need to make it as far to the front of the mouse as you can. That's how it mounts. It allows you to use the DPI button still, which is good. Some of these mods don't allow you to do that, but this one does. I didn't glue it. It literally is pretty much tight on my one here. No need for any glue. Cable management's a bit of an issue. This is what the finished PCB looks like. It hooks in at the front and then it clips into the back of the, the Viper shell. No need for any screws. Clip it all back together. Check all your buttons, sides. And that's it. That's the Viper Mini Ultimate created. Obviously, you've got to use Logitech's G Hub now to program it and do the button binding. Like I said, there's a video link in the description for gameplay if you want to go check that out. Do so and you can see how it performs. It takes me a while to get used to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. So, catch you later. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.